First time scanner, what we're going to do is open up the radial menu for a directional scanner and open up the probe scanner menu. From there, I'm going to click to open up the solar system map, and you're going to see a graphical representation of the solar system. It's kind of neat. And what you see is one sphere that represents a cosmic signature. Now, what we're going to try and do today is use our probes first by launching in a pinpoint formation. This will launch all eight probes at once. We're going to try and use these probes to narrow down the result. That sphere, picture somewhere in that sphere, is a physical object that we're going to try and find. Hopefully it's going to be a wormhole. That's our goal for today, or a data or a relic site. But somewhere in that sphere is what we want to find. Now you can drag your probes around by either grabbing a face or an arrow. Then you can move those around in space. And as well, you can drag on an edge of the probes to expand them as a, as a unit. So they'll all expand at the same, at the same rate. So what we're going to do is start with a large pass. We want to cover this sphere, this cosmic signature sphere, with the most dense area of overlap of our probes, and then hit Analyze. And we're going to start with a large result, and then we're going to narrow it down once we have a better understanding of where the object actually is. So as you can see, the sphere has turned into a dot. Uh, now, it's also possible that it could have turned into a ring, which indicates that only two probes have found it, in which case I would start back up at the larger size. But in this case, I've found a dot, so I'm simply going to move the probes back on top of it um, and move them down one size, and then we're going to check again. And this uh, sequential probing is eventually going to give us a result that becomes a warpable object. Now, I have a very specific goal in mind for today, and what I'm looking for is um, data and relic sites in general. So in this fit, I'm in an Astero. I've brought with me a data. I believe I have a data analyzer on, but I also have a relic and a mobile depot and cargo, which is going to allow me to change uh, if I'm not near a station, because what I'm trying to find is a little pocket of data and relic rather than one or two, because the problem is in high sec, you see this career path is, it's actually relatively popular. So data and relics in high sec are kind of rare. And uh, in order to find some good dense resources, we're going to have to go a little bit underground. And that place for us is into a wormhole. So I'm going to be looking specifically for a class one, two, or three wormhole. Um, and that's because they're going to have a spawn uh, pardon me, a chance of spawning uh, null sec data and relic sites inside of them, uh, which are great for what I want to do today because they don't have rats. So let's jump right in. I've found a wormhole, I'm inside, and this gives us a chance to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the intricacies of scanning. Now I will do a tutorial at some point about wormholes, but in general you'll know that you're in a class 1, 2, or 3 wormhole because when you show info on the outside of the wormhole as you're about to jump in, it'll say that it leads to unknown space. Okay, that means a class 1, 2, or 3 wormhole, and that's what we're trying to get into. If it says dangerous unknown or deadly unknown, you may as well discard that for now. Those are no good for our purposes. So once we're in, and again, this is because we don't want to have to deal with uh, sleeper rats, or any rats really, in general, uh, with this with this Astero fit. So, I've jumped in. Great thing to do first is to bookmark the other side of the wormhole, make sure that no funny business can happen, launch probes and move away from the wormhole in one sort of smooth motion, um, and then just start your scans. Now what you could do is start with a 4AU scan at the sun and then move to each planet. And this will allow you to discard a lot of um, you know really easy to scan gas sites that we're not interested in right now. Um, in this case I've found a wormhole you know, almost right off the bat, very close to my first signature. So I'll go ahead and probe that one out. No problem. Uh, in doing so, I'm also going to warp to the wormhole because, hey, Astero, I can do that. Warping and, and cloaking and all that good stuff. And uh, realistically, there's very little harm that could come to me. So I'm going to continue to probe down the system one by one. And I'm hoping to find ideally more than one data or relic site with a specific criteria, though, that it needs to have a name that resembles an NPC uh, pirate faction rat type. So it needs to be called a Serpentis something, or a Sanchez something, or a Garista something. Um, I think in the end I find a Garista sparkling transmitter or something to that effect, but it needs to be a Nullsec one because if it's, if it's any other name, then that means it's going to have rats at it because we are in a wormhole and wormholes do also naturally spawn data and relic sites. Um, however, those do contain rats, and the difficulty, even in a class 1 or 2, very likely will overwhelm, you know, even a pretty sturdy Astero. 
Okay, as it turns out, it's totally possible. But still, you shouldn't try this at home. In this particular case, I was able to do a site, but yeah, whatever. It's not worth your time. You want to stick to the null site ones. Now, as far as the hack mini game is concerned, it is fairly straightforward. Um, we're going to talk about the specifics of the game in a minute here, but basically, um, it's a mini game. Your objective is to navigate through a matrix of what are called nodes. Um, and find a system control node. Now along your way you're going to find some defensive firewalls of various types that are going to try to protect the system control node and you may also find beneficial or helpful uh, modules or, or pickups basically, right? Um, so we're going to go over a couple of them. This isn't a comprehensive sort of look at every single one of them. This is just sort of like the averages, how the game basically works. I would encourage you to um, to go out and kind of practice and try a few of them out and, and you'll get the hang of it fairly quickly. So the game is based on um, attack and damage, which is called virus coherence and virus strength. Um, actually, that would be, pardon me, life and damage. Um, and just basically, yeah, so in the bottom left, you see in the orange indicated number, um, this is your virus coherence or your life, and on the right side is your uh, the red indicated number, and that's like your attack damage or, or your virus strength. So I'm going through, this is the matrix you see here. I'm going through, and I find my first defensive node right there. And so that also has virus coherence and strength, and you'll see its life on the top and its damage on the bottom. And now I could take that one out and continue along that route, but I would just kind of play shot for shot with it. You click on it once, you're each going to deal your damage to each other. I think technically you deal your damage to it first, so if you kill it in one sort of alpha, then it doesn't deal any damage to you but then I would be able to proceed through that route. But instead, I want to go around. So what I'm doing is mapping kind of around the perimeter. I'm mapping out the matrix, and then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to, you know, finish any of those defensive nodes that I need to. So right there, you saw me click on a white dot. Now, that's a bad idea. White dots represent a dice roll. You don't know what's under there yet. And as a result, you shouldn't actually click on it until you're out of options, um, because right like that second one was, it can become a defensive firewall. Now I can't go through that area of the map where I could have before. So you want to explore as much as you can before hitting the white dot. So here you see I'm hovering over a wrench or spanner indicator and then a box looking object and, and these are different um, sort of defensive uh, modules that I can use. The wrench or spanner is going to increase my life so heal up some HP. The box looking one is going to, um, I think it takes like half of the life off of a defensive node but so I'm just picking one to go after and as you can see there I easily defeat it because I do hit it first and I have a very high virus strength as a result of the Astero and the bonuses from the ship that I'm running. Again I find another one, heal up some HP, that one takes me two shots but I'm able to very quickly find the defensive control node, or pardon me, the system control node and finish up the hack. Successfully completing your hack is going to allow you to open the can and get whatever loot is inside on out of that can and so fantastic success. I've made like 8 million. Move on to the next can, rinse and repeat. Each site is going to net you anywhere between 20 and 50 million. Realistically, once you get your speed up, I mean, this could be a 20 minute site for you, even potentially less. I'm, I'm fairly slow as a hacker, and I think my skills are not quite up to par, but still, I'm able to make a pretty good go of it. So something interesting to make note of as well is if you equip a cargo scanner, you can scan the cans ahead of time, and you can determine what's in them if it's worth your time. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and scan them all, and I'm going to hack them all as well. Um, and it's just fun for me to do that, but for a very high-level scanner, if you're trying to be extremely efficient, you're definitely going to watch for cans that are not worth your time and avoid those and sort of go on to the next site. All right, my dudes, that's going to be it for this video. I have no doubt that you're going to be able to go out there and find some good cans to hack successfully, make a lot of money fast, and uh, generally enjoy your time out there in W space. Make sure you are staying nice and safe. Uh, with the use of an Astero or another ship that's got a cloak on it, or at least watch your D-Scan. And, uh, of course, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. There's going to be more tutorials soon from EVE Business Insider.